Hey guys, Brooke Hoover here. Uh, I base uh, a lot of my teaching on just things I see my students do and things that I think they should probably try to fix if they can. Or, you know, answering questions or basically I just watch people and see what they need. Okay, I have uh, a couple of things I want to kind of fix. Um, on the A minor and E major chords, sometimes people will reverse the middle and ring. Here's how A minor should look, I think. And people will, will reverse the middle and ring. See that? That's just a mess. That's just making it messy and potentially a uh, bad thing. I'm open-minded. I realize it can work, but just... Let's not make it more complicated and difficult than it has to be. <laughs> so, middle ring index on A minor, not ring middle index. Same with E major. Oops. Don't flip these two. Don't reverse them, just middle ring index. And notice how they're the same shape. That's gonna make everything easier because you're gonna go maybe to E7 or E minor, you're all set. Or E7 like this, or E add nine, or whatever, or E7 sharp nine. Let's, that's hard enough, let's not, you get it, all right. Um, how about uh, a G chord? A lot of the books will show a G like this or like this. Those work just fine. But I think this is better to go index, middle, ring, pinky. Ring and pinky side by side on the third fret on the first two strings. It The, the advantage of the way I'm telling you, it sounds a little more, uh, I just say it cuts through the air a little better. This is a little flabby. This rocks a little harder. Plus you can do a G5 like this. If you mute the A string, pick up your index, let your middle finger touch the A string. That'd be like, I call it the ACDCG for that. If you add your index, I call it the Clapton G because on the cover of the Slow Hand album, you can clearly see he's holding a G like that. That's where I learned it. Yeah, so I reckon, now, another reason this works, watch the ring finger when you go to D. Back. Ring finger stays. Like. There's a C2. These two fingers stay in place. It'll save you save you some time. That's all I'm trying to do. Another thing, be careful. Don't clobber extra strings. Let's say you're playing the D chord. Don't hit all six like this. That sounds like garbage. Hit four strings. Just four strings on the D. Pay attention to that. The C chord, same thing, only five strings. Don't hit all six. That could work because C does have an E note in it. But then you end up with three E notes and it sounds pretty E heavy. When you hit all six, just hit five. An F like this, just hit four strings. Don't hit five, don't hit six. Not good. So pay attention to little details like that. And when you strum, try to strum through. Push your pick through. Don't just chip away at two or three strings. Get a nice, full, even sound. These are just things I observe my students doing. I'm like, whoa, let's fix that right now. <laughs> um, say like power chords, if you're doing an E5 like this, don't bring in your middle finger right now. Even though I, I yelled at you to use your middle finger second fret, well in this case, you're gonna use index. That's just the way it is. Uh, that's just one finger laying flat. Don't use two. Just one. You can hit two strings or three. One reason we use our index here is then you're ready for 
more. Yeah, generally, you know, realize we're going to have four fingers covering four frets for riffs and stuff. So fingering is pretty tricky, man. But if, if your fingering is not efficient, you're going to have a lot of trouble. Guitar is difficult enough already. So get those four fingers lined up to cover four frets. Sometimes there'll be five frets. See that? Pinky goes a little higher or six. Index might go down. Just be ready to use four fingers efficiently. Don't, um, don't mix them up. Don't tie your fingers into a knot. And uh, one good thing to do is like, you know, scales or something like uh, That will help you. Keep your fingering straight. So, you know, scales, I don't just, you know, lay scales on my students randomly. I'm like, I kind of dole them out a little bit at a time, but um, that's going to fix your fingering. It's going to help your ears. It's just going to make playing songs easier. What other funny things do we have to do? Oh, yeah, holding the pick. Don't let it hang out way far. Tuck it in here. Just hold the pick on the side of your index finger on the first bone. Let these fingers out. When you strum, you shouldn't, well... Let's say you're picking or doing something. It's usually not a giant motion of your right arm flapping in the wind. It's like smaller. I always say, watch this part of my arm. What's it doing? Not much. Just lay in there. I could have tuned. also I like to mount my hand on that bridge a little bit but you can move it anywhere I always say you can come forward if you want to move it around do different things but have that as your base uh, position you're right you're right your beginning part or where you start so it's this corner of your hand so it's right on this corner of the bridge and you're set um, so if you're strumming, let's see what's like what happens when you strum. Here I'm trying to push through. You know, not or or I'm getting a full you know, in this case six strings on the G. Just try to make it bigger. Don't don't be too small with the the strumming. I'm I'm trying to say follow through with the pick. Don't just chip, you know, three or four strings, try to push through. But if it's a C chord, often I'll mute the sixth string with my thumb. On my fretting hand, will go, come over the top and touch it. Then I can strum, I can strum bigger and not have to worry about it, because that note is dead. A D chord, I'm gonna mute that sixth string. I'm contradicting myself, you can add the fifth string on a D chord. There's five, five strings. There's four. I can control it, but sometimes it doesn't matter that much. Um, so if thumb muting the big string really helps uh, get that big fat string out. It's kind of insurance policy, so we're not hearing that big fat rumbly. And it could be really bad to add that E string. Let's say like you're doing an E flat, check it out. Here's E flat. Four middle strings. I'll tell my students, be careful, hit only the four middle strings, and then they go. That's pretty frightening, isn't it? So that's where I learn, that's where I get my information, watching students and, uh, you know, trying to fix some things that they might have learned. You know, who knows where they pick this stuff up, but uh, I want, I'm just trying to fix. Uh, some of those things and you know you gotta have a little sense of humor about it but 
if I can get the word out on some of these th- kind of mistakes and blunders and get things sounding better, um, that's kind of my, my mission is just try not to be too mean. Sometimes I get a little, you know, a person will say, well, this is how I've been doing it for 40 years. I'm like, yeah, you've been sounding terrible for 40 years. Let's fix that now. <laughs> let's, let's not do another year of that. You know, let's fix it. I get a little, I, I don't mean to be mean about it, but you know, they're so f- entrenched in some of these bad techniques. I kind of want to shake them out of it. I'm trying to, you know, I have to, if I just, you know, if I'm too passive about it, they'll just keep doing the uh, kind of some bad techniques. So I have to kind of do my best to not make them cry. But uh. <laughs> all right. So I'm not the authority on anything other than a little bit of guitar teaching. So uh, if you find fault in what I do, let me know. But otherwise, I appreciate you uh, checking up on my uh, channel here. I got a bad cold in case you're wondering what's up with my voice. All right, I'm going to go do some stuff. I'll see you later.